hello and welcome to 11th java training uh, video so we have reached 11th uh, tutorial point now and let's see what we are going to have a look at in this session so in this session we will learn about file system that is how we can handle different types of files which is an important aspect when working with selenium web driver because you would have situations when you have your data being test data being fed in from external files we do not hard code test data in the code base and this is when file system comes very handy so let's see what we are going to learn in this session in this session we will see how we can retrieve file path how we can copy file to another file how we can read a file how we can read properties file and how we can read how we can pass xml file at last we will see how we can use maven so that we do not have to hard code any of the file path all right so let's begin so here is a sample uh, project as usual which you can download from git uh, i have created a new package here called file system and i have a class called file system here and now let's see what's happening in this class so i have a main method here and first what i'm going to do is i'm going to retrieve the absolute path of a file but let's understand before what is absolute and the relative path absolute path of a file is a path which which in, which includes the root as well for example on unix it would be something called slash home slash user and some more directories and on windows it would be like c colon user slash document some other file directory so this is called absolute path relative path is a path which does not include the root element so it may begin with the username following by some document all right so how we can retrieve absolute path of a file so if you see here i have a dot git ignore file here which is available here and i'm trying to retrieve is complete path how do i do that to do this i have to use something called a paths class so this is a paths class which is in java.nio.file package one more thing to be able to run these programs you should be using java 7 and not java 6 so please upgrade your java to java 7 if you have not already all right so i i'm using path class here and then it has a get method and this is something which i can use to get the path object so i create i instantiate path as path name of the variable is path equal to paths dot get which is which must be a static method which we saw earlier that a static method can be called over the class name so i'm calling static method get over the class name which is paths and i'm pa i'm passing the file name to it now how we can find the absolute path of the file so once we have the path object then we can use to absolute path method and this will give us the complete or the absolute path to the file we will have a look at it uh, result when i run the program later okay let's see another example what we are doing next is we are trying to copy file from one location to another so i have a source file here which is sample1.txt which is a simple file with some text in it and then I have a destination file called sample2.txt but if you see here in my project I do not have any file called sample2.txt so when I run this program then Java will create this file for me now how do I copy the content of one file to another file I can use files class here which is again from java.nio.file package and I can use the copy method here so I use the source file and I use two path method to get the path object of the source file and i then use the destination file object and two path method to find out the path object of a destination file so this is how i can copy one file to another when i run the program then we will see that sample2 file is created runtime all right let's see how we can read from a file so we saw earlier that sample1.txt file has some text in it very simple text three lines and now let's try to read it line by line how do we do that to be able to read a file we have to get the buffered reader uh, object but to get to there first we have to create an object for in input string which is another file handling class in java so how do we create its object we write input string following the name of the variable then we have to get the object of type input stream so what do we do here we use the files class and then on the files class we invoke a static method called new input stream so if you see now you can see input stream gives me uh, an input stream object which i'm assigning to a variable name input stream so i write files dot new input stream and input stream needs a path object which is here path object okay 
So how do I get the path object? We know this now. We can use path.get to absolute path. This is something which we used earlier also. So this is how we get the path object, which we are passing to new input stream method. And new input stream method gives us the object of type input stream. So now we have input stream object. Once we have input stream object, then we can construct an object for buffered reader. How do we do that? We create buffered reader. <coughs> we use buffered reader class. Then we have name of the instance variable here. And then we instantiate it using new buffered reader constructor. And the buffered reader needs the reader object. So what we are passing here is we are instanti instantiating new input stream reader, which gives us input stream reader. And input stream reader requires an object of type input stream. And since we create an input stream here, so we pass on input stream here. And this is how we create a buffer reader. So we have new buffer reader, new input stream reader, and input stream object. So finally, we have the buffer reader. Now we can use this buffer reader to read lines one by one. So I have declared a string object here called line. And then I say buffer reader dot read line. So buffer reader dot read line would read a line for me. And if it is null, then it means file has been read completely. So I want to run this while loop as long as red line is not null. How do I do that? So I say line, which is my object here, equal to buffer reader dot read line, not equal to null. So as long as there is a line remained to be read, or as long as this is not null, I'm just printing a line. That's all. All right. Let's see how we can read from properties file. Property file is a specific kind of file which has key value pair. So I created a property file here called config.properties and I have three keys and corresponding values here. I have URL, I have browser and I have operating system. So how do we read the properties file here? To be able to work with properties file, we should first instantiate properties object. That is pro how do we do that? We use properties class. We give a name to the instance variable equal to new properties and now we have to get the access to the file which is config.properties so we create an input stream object again we had created input stream here as well and now we create it here as well so we say input stream input stream equal to new file input stream and file input stream will give us the object of type file input stream which is here and then we pass the name of the properties file to it having done this we have to load the properties file to do that, we use the load method over the properties object. So we say properties.load and then we pass our input stream object to it. All right. So now we have access to properties object. Now we can use this object to get the properties. So to be able to, to, be able to do that, we have to use properties.get property and then we have to pass the name of the property. So we have properties here, URL, browser and operating system. So I pass here get property URL, get property browser, and then get property operating system. So this is how all files, all properties would be read. All right. Now at times you may also come across where you have to read data from XML file, which are very common when writing Selenium test or testing websites in general. So let's see how we can read the XML file. So I have an XML file here, which is a staff.xml. Uh, it's root tag is company. I hope we all know how XML file looks like. And then we have two more nodes here called staff. So we have two staff members here. One with a staff ID 001 and another with staff ID 002. And then we have first name, last name, nickname and salary of the staff. That's all a simple XML file. All right. So we come to reading XML file now. So here I have to first get the file object. So I created file object with the name XML file and then I have file equal to new file and the file equal to new file or the new file constructor needs the path of the file and we know how we can get that now. We can use the path object, we can call the get method, we have to pass the name of the file to it, then we say to absolute path which gets us the path object and then if we convert it to a string then we get the string representation. This is how we have our file object. Following this we have to create document builder factory. So how do we create document builder factory object? We create it using the new instance method. So this method is available. This is a static method because we are calling it over the class name. So it is available in document builder factory method. Uh, doc, sorry, document builder factory class. Now we have to create a document builder. So we have document builder factory here. So we say document builder factory dot new document builder. And this is how we get access 
to the document builder uh, object and now we can create our document object so we create document object using document builder we write document builder dot pass and we pass we pass on the file object to it this is a do document so this is the document object which we need to be able to pass the xml file so if you want to find out the root element then we can say document dot get element get document element get node name all right so this will print the root element for us and the root element is we you know company so let's see how we can read the individual uh, notes now uh, so these 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 are the notes we have here so we have two staff notes so let's create a node list object here how do we create node list object let's use node list class following the name of the instance variable then we say document get elements by tag name and the tag name is a staff here as we saw earlier if you see the syntax document dot get elements by tag name it is same as how we use document object model um, in, in an HTML or XHTML file as well. All right. So now let's print how many nodes we have. How do we do that? We say node list dot get length and then we get the total number of node list element. Now let us iterate through all of these nodes and print individual element. So we have a for loop here which has index zero and then we run this for loop till we reach uh, end of the node list. So we get the we get the length of the node list using the get length method and then we are incrementing the index and let's print on which node we are here all right now we have to get to the individual node so how do we do that in the node list uh, object we can use the item uh, method and we can pass on the index number to it once we do that then item method will give us a specific node and once we have a node that is a node this node then we can find the uh, individual uh, data sets which are first name last name etc how do we do that we have to first cast a node object to element here and we know how to do that so we write element in front of node and then we say get attribute so get attribute is something which we are using to uh, get the attribute uh, ID here so attribute name is ID hence I have used get attribute ID here now if we want to get the first name then we again have to cast node into element and then we say get elements by tag name so tag name is first name here which we can see here all right but as we see get elements by tag name is elements so it gives us you know more than one value and we know that there is only one first name possible in our uh, one staff node so we get access of first node using dot item method so we say dot item followed by zero and get text context which will give us the first name in the similar way we can get the nickname using get elements by tag name get to the first item and then get text context so let's run this program and see what happens this is the main method all right so program is over let's analyze the results so first we are printing path to our git ignore file which was this file so it has printed path to my git ignore file all right now we have a copy method to copy sample file 1 to sample file 2 and if you see a sample file 2 has been created and if you see sample file 2 has the text which is same as sample file 1 all right let me delete this file because if i don't delete it then i cannot run the program again program will complain that file already exists and let me just run it again all right so let's see reading from a file now so while reading from a file we were printing individual lines so these, this is output of reading from a file. So line is this is test file. This test file is used in sample program. <coughs> Sorry. And this test file has total three lines, which is this. All right. And then we have reading from properties files where we are printing values of URL, browser, and operating system. So we can compare it here. Reading from properties file. URL is google.com. Browser is Firefox. Uh, okay. This is wrong. I have written wrong statement here. It should be operating system all right and then we have reading from xml file where we are printing values of individual staff nodes so first i print the attribute here uh, no before that i am printing the root element 
So root element is company, so which is printed here. How many staff nodes we have? We know there are two staff nodes. So this is something which I am printing here. And staff ID is 001. 0001 for first staff. First name is Jimmy. Uh, James and nickname is Jimmy and then I am printing the values uh, from the second node which is staff node 0002 first name is Pete and nickname is Pete's all right okay so we have completed most of the topics except the Maven so let's see how we can use this with Maven uh, if you have not uh, worked with Maven yet then I will suggest you to follow my Java training video tutorial in which I have a section on test design and there I introduce Maven. So when using Maven, what we can do is we can keep these files, be it XML file or properties file or CSV file in different folders and then we can use Maven to read these files for us. The advantage here would be that you do not have to hard code a path because if you hard code the path, if you say C colon some username, some document, then program will run on your system but not on other system or if you want to run test on Jenkins it will not work there so this is why you should use Maven and you should use resource properties from Maven uh, to be able to read files without hard coding the path all right so we have covered all we have covered copying file reading file reading properties file passing XML file and using Maven uh, well you can follow the tutorial from my Java training uh, sorry from my selenium training to find out how you can use Maven uh, okay, so this brings us to an end of this training session. So I hope you enjoy watching it, you find it educational and you learn lots of things from it. So, and if so, then please click the thumbs up on the video. Uh, yeah, good luck with learning. See you in next tutorial. Bye-bye.